Hello Indie Game fans, last video running off the new releases of me, where some of you might notice the name change, but let's dive into the usual lot of Surprise, Overlooked and 1.0 releases. Let's begin with Unexplored 2 The Wayfarer's Legacy, a gorgeous open world action roguelite that released in early access on the Epic Games Store. Due to the horrible storefront which is still not fixed, upcoming games on their platform don't really get that much exposure, so indie developers do take note, but promotional issues aside, it's a title that I've been looking forward to, so I'm happy to see that we can play. The developer did release quite an extensive explainer video, so I'll leave you to them. Unexplored 2 The Wayfarer's Legacy is a challenging procedural RPG. It has a note-based open world and a cool twist on permadeath. Hi, I'm Joris Dormans, game director of Unexplored 2, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the game that we're making. A typical gameplay session starts out in a town called Haven, which is a hub location where you can collect resources or uh, gather intelligence. And there you might find out about a key that's lost in an ancient temple somewhere uh, a little further on the map. And then you might set out to try and get to that temple. And all along the road you'll face encounters, hazards, enemies. Once you get past all these, these challenges, you'll find yourself at the ancient temple. You might need to climb to the top of a, a cliff to gain access to the temple. And in the temple you might find other enemies, hazards, traps, puzzles. A lot of things uh, the game can throw your way because it's all being generated. In an Unexplored 2 you play as the Wayfarer. And uh, the, the Wayfarer is a character in the game that's tasked to see the staff of Yendo destroyed. So at the start of the game, you're handed this staff, a very potent magical item that is actually a threat to the world, and you need to take it to the first valley, to the prime elemental forge, where it can be destroyed. So uh, in our game, there is a lot of opportunities to avoid combat by taking a fortune test, uh, which is our equivalent of the dice roll that you normally would have in a tabletop game. The skills that you have as a character, they will all play into this system. If you have more skills, you'll have more opportunities and more choices during a fortune test to actually bend the possible outcomes to the outcome that you really want to have. Well, this is a dangerous world, so if you play and explore, you should expect to die once in a while. Once you've died, you actually get to pass on your legacy. You can actually choose to keep the world that you have, keep the items or pass on the items that you found to the next Wayfarer and start anew with a different character in the same world that actually has advanced a little bit further. The legacy system that we've set up enables the world to respond to the choices that you made before. So the things that you've achieved and the, the things that you've accomplished before, they're still there or they might actually come back to bite you in the ass. However, as soon as you enter the first valley, you're all in. If you die in the first valley, the game is lost forever. That world will be gone. Save game will be deleted. The survival base builder is a growing subgenre that I do kind of like, probably exploding in popularity due to They Are Billions, where Project Apocalypse is in a similar vein but with nondescript cubes instead where I do find the infected zombie cubes to be rather hilarious. This video is brought to you by Sumire a beautifully illustrated narrative adventure game about a girl and her dreams. It's an emotional journey where you live through and recall key moments in her life, which, combined with the surging soundtrack tied to events and time of day, does make it quite the experience. As with most narrative titles, choices have to be made which means branching narratives and making the playthrough truly yours where at its core it's a story about life experiences, hopes and dreams.
wonderful little experience, so it does come recommended from me. While I do love pixel art, there's something just a little off about the look of Heidelberg 1693, perhaps due to the lack of outlines and the general busyness of the environment, but it's set in an age of black magic in the late 17th century in Germany and should be at least worth a look if you enjoy action platformers. Your main character is a musketeer which is something new, where the addition of the occult element does keep things interesting. A long in development JRPG title that does look good is Light Fairy Tale, releasing episode 2 last month, following on from episode 1 which released in 2019. It does have a gorgeous anime intro, but the 3D models and environments in the game don't look too bad either, reminding me of classics in the genre. I have a huge soft spot for JRPGs, so I do have to give it a shout out, but you might want to know that there is at least one more episode in the works and may want to wait a little, or you could also support this developer right now by getting the first two parts. Classic turn-based roguelikes are fairly uncommon these days as compared to their more action-oriented counterparts, so I do have to mention In the House of Silence, one that has a sweet art style but perhaps not the best trailer, where you are mutating parts of your body in order to fight the monsters, being a small but neat game. If you enjoy classic platformers, a no-brainer is the Pico 8 looking Alexio, who I love the duck main character, looking to be another smaller gem of a game.
Another trend that I'm seeing in roguelites is the emergence of dice builder titles. Yes, that means deck building but with dice, where you do have some way of manipulating the values on the pieces or to put new dice into the mix. But the very simple looking and named Roll is one such title, which includes some idle game or clicker elements, so I am curious about this. Like Ascension covered a couple of weeks back and Astro Aqua Kitty just covered recently, Carebots is an exploration shoot 'em up, which is a subgenre that I can totally get behind, combining the fun of ship combat with almost Metroidvania style upgrades and exploration, making this game a title of interest. If you enjoy Tycoon games, Grand Casino Tycoon may be of interest, but the theme and subject is pretty self-explanatory, so do check it out if you're looking for such an experience, although do note that it's currently sitting at mixed reviews. Build the glamorous, profitable casino I always you always wanted. <laughs> the house always wins. The freeform vehicle builder has also been increasing in popularity, stemming from games like Besiege, where Diesel Punk Wars has you building war machines on land, air, and sea, reaching version 1.0 and is worth a look. You do get direct control of the vehicle, and there's even a story campaign mode, as well as level progressions and unlocks, adding some structure to a genre that traditionally does not have much of one, although the sandbox option is there as well. Another classic platforming title makes the list with Mission in Stone Drift Land Snow Log, the free demo of a game which should be out in Q4, allowing you to play through the first two levels to get a feel for the game, where this title should be releasing in the form of some sort of advent calendar and is worth a play.
Not quite sure how to play the Japanese dice game, Jinchi Rorin, but the 3D models in NKO dice looks great and seems to have been received well, so do take a look. Since we developed the technology to travel through hyperspace, a race to other habitable planets and space has broken out among the big corporations. In search of limitless growth, they leave Earth exploited and its environment devastated. The voluntary pioneers and colonists are lured to this adventurous journey by the hope of a better life and a new beginning in an untouched world. Only a development strategy that ensures the quality of life for our colonists and protects the planetary ecosystem can have long-lasting success. Your job as a space colony manager is building sustainable civilizations. Establish thriving and profitable colonies on a global scale. Satisfy their hunger for resources. The impressive long and development space strategy title Imagine Earth launched out of early access looking very impressive since it's a real-time space strategy title as compared to classic 4X or grand strategy where the space colony sim on both a micro and macro level is certainly worth a look. Take care of pollution and emissions caused by your expanding cities. With increased climate change, natural disasters are becoming more frequent and severe. Do research for renewable energy sources and develop sustainable production lines to avoid destruction and climate collapse. Let us use the second chance to change our way of life and to transform the production of energy and goods in a sustainable way. Achieving a balance between growth and sustainability is the final challenge for every civilization. Imagine Earth Limited, building a better future in space. We are all cards in the game of power. Struggling in the board of time. As we face the ashes of a forlorn past, new factions are built to protect what remains. Unleash the power of your leader's decisions. Another title that launched out of early access is Koza Voices of the Dark, a free-to-play collectible card game that's a little like Magic the Gathering in terms of combat, but lacking the traditional land or mana system, putting a new spin on things while having gorgeous art and animation. Being free to play, the monetization in this are of course that you can buy card packs as a CCG tradition, so you do have to decide if it's right for you, but please, if you do know that you have a problem with blind packs and loot boxes, stay far away from this type of game. Fight for your cause now. One more 1.0 release of interest is Strike Buster Prototype, a roguelite shooter map title that feels great to play, having you zipping around the screen, blasting enemies and avoiding projectiles with a meta progression relic system that keeps you playing just one more run. Among the number of first-person sims to be released last month, one standout example is Power Wash Simulator, bringing the very satisfying act of deep cleaning something to your PC. 
It doesn't seem like much, but it's in the same vein as a game like House Flipper, simply being one of those few good games after all is said and done. Interestingly, it comes to us from the developer of Velocity 2X and most recently, the Peaky Blinders game, where this game is somehow also being published by Square Enix, so it's not so indie, but a curiosity for sure. I'm very intrigued by the description of Graven, which is, I quote, a gritty action first-person puzzler, but on the surface, it does look like a boomer shooter to me. Perhaps it has more in common with something like Dishonored or Thief, but without the explicit stealth portion, where the action looks good but I'm still curiously baffled by the puzzler descriptor. Currently at mixed reviews, citing a lack of content, I believe this should work itself out over time, but only time will tell. But given that this developer and publisher is establishing themselves in the retro FPS space, it takes the number one spot. For more upcoming retro FPS titles, check out this video and I will see you after the jump. 